Hello world, I'm Benjamin, and this is Source Decoded. A friend of mine gave me a book for Christmas. It's called How to Invent Everything by Ryan North, a survival guide for the stranded time traveler. The idea is that you have rented a time machine, and included in your time machine is this book, just in case you get stuck in the distant past and can't get home again. It explains how to recreate a civilization from scratch. It teaches you how to invent farming so that you can have a calorie surplus so that you can spend your time inventing other things like simple machines and domesticating animals and some basic first aid. And it's, it's a fun book. It's an interesting look into the real fundamentals of how things work that we depend on every day. Near the back of the book, he talks about how to invent a machine that can help you think. And I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to build a basic calculator, a basic computer of some kind. Now technically you can make a computation engine out of lots of things. Nowadays we make computation engines that use electricity, our computers and phones and smartwatches and everything else, but technically you could make them out of mechanical pieces or even water with specific kinds of valves and things. My electrical engineering skills are developing, to be generous, and the mechanics required to make all of these little pieces that move around just right is way beyond me. So I decided that I would make my computer using something that I know how to use, a programming language. Now, if it seems ridiculous to you to make a calculator that can do almost nothing using JavaScript on a computer that can do pretty much anything, you're, you're pretty right. But that's not going to stop me from doing it. Because if nothing else, it'll be an interesting exercise into learning how computers work. So the computer that I'm going to make will initially only be able to add numbers. Before we get to making this machine, we need to look at how we add numbers. So I'm going to just write some numbers down. 1, 3, 7, 9, 2, and 6, 4, 1, 3, 1. If you were to add these numbers like they taught you to do in elementary school, you would follow a specific kind of algorithm. You take the first group of numbers and add them together. 2 plus 1 is 3. All right, then you take the second group of numbers and add them together. 9 plus 3 is 12. Now, we don't actually have a character that represents the number 12. We operate in a base 10 system, which means we have 10 different numbers to work with. 0 to 9. So when we reach an answer that adds up to more than 9, we have to carry part of that answer into the next column. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 is really 10 plus 2. So we can move that 10 up here and put the 2 down here. Now you notice this algorithm has two outputs. There's the result of our operation here, the 2, and the result of the carry that goes up here, the 1. So hang on to that little fact for a minute. Let's finish adding by continuing our algorithm. 7 plus 1 is 8, plus the carry is 9. 3 plus 4 is 7, and 6 plus 1 is 7. So that's how we add two numbers in decimal, or base 10. As you may have heard, computers can't count to 9. They can only count to 1. They operate on a base two system, zero and one, or binary. The reason for that is pretty simple. Making a machine that can count past one is really hard and really complicated. It's just simpler to build a machine that can only count to one. So in binary, the math is a little different. Zero plus zero still equals zero. Zero plus one is equal to one, like you might expect. But one plus one is two. We don't have a way to represent two, so we have to cut that answer in pieces and move part of it over to the next column, just like we do in base 10. So the answer to 1 plus 1 in binary is 10. The answer to 1 plus 1 plus 1, then, is 11. Now this may seem really foreign, but the principles are the same. We just have fewer ways to represent quantities. This is still zero things and zero things is zero things. Zero things and one thing is still one thing. This one thing plus one thing is still two things. And one thing and one thing and one thing is still what we'd call three things. We just have to represent it this way. 
So let's take our algorithm for adding decimal numbers and see how it works in a binary system. So I'm going to write some numbers 1011011110111 one, 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 and let's add them together. 1 plus 1 is 2, we can't write 2, so we have to carry part of it over here and write the 1 here. So remember, here's there's two out there's two outputs to this algorithm. There's the result of the sum and the carry. So let's move on to the next one. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 10. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 10. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 10. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. You can carry that up and just drop it straight down to there. So the algorithm still works. Now all we need is a machine that can do that work for us. The machines that run binary math are made out of what are called logic gates. A logic gate is drawn kind of like this. This is an AND gate. It has two inputs and one output. And the operation of these gates is often represented in what's called a truth table. So you take each of the out inputs, we'll call it A and B, call this O for output, so let's make a table with A and B and O. The possible inputs are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. An AND gate, the output of an AND gate is 1 if both inputs are 1. So this is 0, 0, 0, 1. Make sense? The next common gate is the OR gate. In it's drawn badly like this. It also has two inputs. We'll call them A and B and one output. What's the truth table look like? A, B, O. The possible inputs are the same. The output of an OR gate is true if either of the inputs is true or one or on. I'll use those terms interchangeably. Sorry. Zero, one, one, one. Let's draw a couple more. There's also the NOT gate, which is drawn like that. It only has one input and one output. So A, O, this is going to be an easy truth table. 1, 0, 1. The output of a NOT gate is the opposite of what the input is, so 1, 0. Cool. And the last one that we'll talk about is the exclusive OR. This one's a little more complicated, and you can actually make this using the other gates, but we'll just treat it as its own discrete thing. It also has two inputs and one output, A, B. The output of the XOR is true if either of the inputs is true and they're not both true. So let's write it this way, it'll make more sense. Zero, one of them's true, yes. Yes, now they're both true here, so the output is a zero. Now that all seems pretty esoteric, I'm sure, but try to hold on to that for a minute, and let's make a machine that can add. Let's draw out a truth table for what this machine should do. It's going to have an input, A, and another input, B, and we're going to add these together to get the result. So, zero plus zero is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. And 1 plus 1 is 10. So this machine actually needs two outputs. Remember when we were adding 1 and 1 and we needed to carry and I said that that algorithm had two outputs. One is the sum and one is the carry. That's how this machine will work too. So I'm going to draw the lines for our table here and call it carry and sum. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Now you look at this truth table, look at these columns right here, and you might recognize the output of some of our gates. The sum output is 
true only if just one of the inputs is true. That was the exclusive OR. The output of the carry is true only if both of the inputs is true. That was our AND. So we can redraw this using the little gates that we drew earlier and make a, make a machine. I like my machines to be boxes. We know our machine has two inputs, A and B. It also has two outputs, which we call SUM and CARRY. And we know we need these two gates. We'll draw our exclusive OR. We know that SUM was the result of an exclusive OR. And CARRY was the result of an AND. So there, we have just made our first adding machine. Technically this is called a half adder. And while it's very cool, it can't add very much. We need a way to be able to add more than just one number at a time. So let's put a couple of half adders together and make a full adder that can then be chained with other full adders to add a number of any size that we want. Now first, let's draw up an example again of how we would add two binary numbers. One plus one is 10. So we're going to keep the zero here and carry the one up. One plus one is 10. Same thing. Boy, this was a, kind of a boring example. One is a 10, and then one plus one plus one is 11. So we keep a one here, carry the one, which falls back down. Now we know, let's, let's draw some lines here. We'll call this number A, number B, and then up here we'll have the carries. These will become the inputs to our full adder that we're going to make. The first time we run this, there isn't a carry, so we'll draw a zero there. And now let's make our box. We know that our adder is going to take three inputs, A, B, and carry in. The first thing our adder does is add A and B, and we can use a half adder to do that. So I'll draw another box in here, H. A, you can rewind and revisit what a half adder looks like inside if you need to. But an HA takes two inputs, A and B, and has two outputs, the sum and the carry. So let's add A plus B. Now after we've added A and B, we need to take the sum of that result and add it to the carry input. So we'll run this around. This is another half adder. This also has two outputs, a sum and a carry. Let's give ourselves a little more room here. Finally on the output side we have the sum and the carry out. The sum output is just going to be the result, the sum result of the second add. We'll draw that there. And now for the carry output, if you look up here, if we add two ones together at any point, then we need to carry. So there's two ones here, we carried. There's two ones here, we carried. Two ones here, we carried. Two ones here we carried. So the carry output is going to be an OR of both of the carries. So in other words, carry out is true if either of the half adds returned a carry. So let's run through this operation and see how it works. Let's start with the first column here. A is 1, B is 1, carry is 0. So let's add 1 and 1. That's going to result of a sum of 0 
and a carry of 1. That carry will come down here to the OR. The 0 becomes the input of our second add operation, which is going to add it to the carry input, results in a sum of 0 and a carry of 0. Did either of the sums carry? Yes. So this is going to be 0, whoops, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 0. So does that match what happened over here? A plus B results in a sum of 0, that's correct, and a carry of 1. Good. Let's erase these and do it again. And there's the answer calculated by our cool machine. That is how a full adder works. That's pretty cool, but we're not quite all the way there. We want to be able to make a machine that can add all of these numbers at once. So can we arrange a bunch of full adders to collect a whole bunch of input bits and just dump out a whole bunch of output bits? In fact, we can. Let's say we have some inputs. I'm going to draw boxes this time. We want to add two four-digit binary numbers. This will be the A column and the B column. Over here, let's draw us a bunch of full adders. They have the A and B inputs. They also have a carry in, a carry out, and the sum output. We have four digits we need to add, so let's just make four of these. Let's draw some output boxes over here. Since we're adding two four-digit numbers, we could end up with a five-digit number as the result of a final carry. And then all we have to do is wire things up like this. The, the result of the first two will go A and B. And I'm not going to draw all of these lines because it will be a mess. But the result of this comes around into this box. Then these two inputs go to these. And the result of this comes down to that output box. And then the same thing for this. And the same thing for this. Now for the carry, the carry for this first one is always going to be zero. So we can just drop a zero into that first carry and then hook all of these carries up to each other. And this last carry goes into the last number. And there is at least a conceptual model of a simple adding machine. In the next video, we'll implement this in JavaScript so we can actually watch it working. Stay tuned and you'll see me then. Bye.